Hi guys, and welcome back to Logical Redstone Reloaded. Today, we're finally gonna build our first redstone circuits. But first, let's talk about the fundamental idea behind every circuit we'll ever make, logic. What is logic? Why is it useful? And how can we implement it with redstone? If you're not already familiar with binary, I highly recommend watching the previous episode. Binary and some hexadecimal will be extremely important for the rest of this series. So without further ado, let's get started. Throughout history, humans have always been eager to quantify logic. Whether it was to question things like morality or to reason about the laws of nature, humans are always trying to gain a deeper, logical understanding of the world around them. As a result, countless systems of logic, math, and science have been developed all over the world. In the mid-1800s, a system was published by a man named George Boole, called Boolean Algebra. Nowadays, Boolean Algebra is the foundation behind digital logic, as well as many other applications. So how does it work? Just like normal algebra, Boolean algebra has variables, but instead of taking on any possible value, these variables can only have two values, true or false, one or zero. Boolean algebra also has operations. Similar to addition or multiplication that you would see in normal algebra, Boolean algebra has logical operations. The three most basic ones are and, or, and not. Let's look at these in more detail. First, we have the NOT operation, also referred to as negation. In Boolean algebra, it's signified with this negation symbol, but in other notations like in programming, you might also see it expressed as an exclamation point. The NOT operation simply outputs the opposite of what it's given. Let's say I have this expression, the negation of A. A is a variable, so I don't know what it is, but I know it's either true or false. So let's make a table to describe both possibilities as well as what the output would be. We have two possibilities for A, and the output in both scenarios is just the opposite of A because it's being negated. This table is saying that if A is false, not A is true, and if A is true, not A is false. This type of table where you list all the possibilities is called a truth table. One interesting property about negation is that if you do it twice, you're back to where you started. This means that the expression not not A is equivalent to A. In other words, they will always have the same truth value, no matter if A is true or false. Next, we have the OR operation, also referred to as disjunction. In Boolean algebra, it's signified with a V symbol, or sometimes with what looks like addition. And in programming, it's often expressed with a vertical bar. Let's look at the expression A or B. OR outputs true if A or B is true. A and B are variables, and once again, I don't know what they are. So I'll make a truth table with A, B, and the output A or B. This time, our truth table needs four rows because we have four possibilities for A and B. Now, according to the OR operation, we output true when at least one of them is true. By looking at the table, we can see that that corresponds to these three rows. The only time that A or B is false is when A and B are both false. And that's the truth table for the OR operation. Finally, we have the AND operation, also referred to as conjunction. It's signified with an upside down V symbol, or sometimes with what looks like multiplication. And in programming, it's often expressed with the AND symbol. Sorry, I do not have enough resolution here for a good AND symbol, <laughs> this is terrible. The expression A and B outputs true if both A and B are true. So once again, we can make a truth table with the four possibilities for A and B. The only row that outputs true is the one on the bottom where both A and B are true. The other three rows are false. Also, if you didn't notice already, these three operations work the same way that they do in conversation. Let's say Bob is a man wearing a blue shirt. If I said the statement, Bob is a man and Bob is wearing a red shirt, you'd say that's false because even though he's a man, he's not wearing a red shirt, he's wearing a blue one. Both parts of the statement have to be true for the whole thing to be true. But if I said Bob is a man or Bob is wearing a red shirt, you'd say that's true, because Bob is a man. The other parts of the statement don't matter, as long as at least one of them is true. All right, awesome. So those are the three basic operators of Boolean algebra. And once you have these operators, you can also start to create what are called laws. A law of Boolean algebra is just a small Boolean expression designed to show some property or fact. For example, if I have x or zero, this will always be equal to just x. This is called the identity law. Or if I have x or 1, this will always be equal to 1. Because the OR operator doesn't care what x is, it's going to output true either way. This is called the annihilator law. And lastly, one of the most important laws in all of Boolean algebra is called De Morgan's law. It states that the negation of an AND operator is equivalent to distributing the negation and switching it to an OR operator. And the reverse is true as well. So De Morgan's tells us that you can distribute a negation as long as you swap the operator. 
This is a really powerful law and it's used all the time. Of course, you can always just prove it with a truth table and I encourage you to do so, but another way to think about it is like this. If A and B are not both true, then that means either A is false or B is false. There are a bunch of other laws I could go over, but I'll save that for you to look at in the description if you're interested. What I do want to go over though is analyzing a Boolean expression, because now we have the tools to do so. Let's take a look at this Boolean expression, A or B and not C. Our truth table needs eight rows to cover the eight possibilities of A, B, and C. And by the way, the number of rows we need is always two to the power of how many different variables there are. In this case, two to the third is eight. Okay, now let's start to think about when this equation would be true. The first thing I notice is that when A is true, the whole thing is true, right? We know that from the annihilator law. The OR gate doesn't care what this second quantity is. As long as A is true, the whole thing will output true. So let's mark true on all the rows where A is true, which is just these bottom four rows, because on these rows, A is one. Now for the other four rows, A is false, but that's not enough to conclude what the OR gate will evaluate to. We still have to look at the second part because the second part might make the OR gate become true again. So the question is, when is B and not C true? Well, I kind of just said it. It's true when we have B and not C. In other words, when B is true and C is false. And if we look at the four remaining rows, there's only one row where that's the case. B is one, C is zero. So right on this row, we need this to be true. The last three rows have to be false because we've shown that both sides of the OR are false. And that is our finished truth table. Now we know what this expression will evaluate to for any combination of A, B, and C. If you have any doubts about this, or if you're brand new to Boolean algebra, I highly recommend going through each row one at a time, plugging in the truth values and seeing if the output makes sense. And if you want more practice, try filling out the truth table for these expressions. I'll put the solutions in the description. All right, awesome. Now, before we start building circuits, I want to talk about one more operation, the exclusive OR, also known as XOR. Even though it's technically not one of the three basic operations, it's still extremely useful and used everywhere. Here's the symbol for it. It's like a circle with a plus sign on it. And in programming, it's often expressed with the caret symbol. The way it works is it outputs true if only one of the inputs are true. Here's the truth table for it. It's pretty similar to OR. The only difference is that when both inputs are true, XOR outputs false because you can't have both. It's exclusive. Okay, now let's finally talk about circuits. To use Boolean algebra to its fullest potential, we should build circuits that mimic these logical operators. These types of circuits are called logic gates. There are four logic gates that correspond to the operations I've talked about so far. The NOT gate, the OR gate, the AND gate, and the XOR gate. All of these gates essentially just implement their operation on real binary signals, and they follow the exact same truth table. So let's check out each one and how to build them with redstone. First, NOT gates. These are represented in logic diagrams with a triangle and a dot on the end of it. They literally just take a binary input, negate it, and give a binary output. And lucky for us, there's a redstone component that's specifically designed for NOT gates, the redstone torch. If I have a wire connected to a redstone torch, the output is the negation of the input. This is a NOT gate. And although this is the most common way to make one, there are plenty of other ways. For example, I can make one with a comparator on subtract mode that's being powered from the back. The input to the NOT gate is the side of the comparator. As you can see, when the side is not being canceled, the output is one. But when you cancel the side, the output is zero. Next, let's make an OR gate. Here's the symbol for it in logic diagrams. It takes two binary inputs and gives one binary output. The funny thing is, with redstone, OR gates are stupidly easy because they're already built into how redstone wire behaves. If I take two wires and connect them into a single wire, then as long as at least one of the inputs are on, the output is on. So technically, this is an OR gate. Yeah, not very complicated. And just in case you want some other variations, here are some examples. You can play around with them in the world download in the description. Next, let's make an AND gate. This is the symbol for one, and of course it just outputs one when both inputs are one. Unfortunately in redstone, there's no super easy way to make an AND gate. It's not built directly into any components. However, if you have NOT gates and OR gates, you can actually construct an AND gate out of them. 
That being said, this is a perfect opportunity to try to make one yourself. If you don't want to do it in redstone, you can also just draw it as a logic diagram. As a hint, you need at least three knock gates and one or gate. Pause the video now if you want to try it. All right, welcome back, and here it is. We have knock gates on the inputs, then they go into an or gate, and then one more knock gate on the end. So to check our work, let's build this with redstone and see if it actually behaves like an AND gate. Okay, here's a super small version of it. These torches pointing up are the first two knock gates, this dust in the middle is the OR gate, and this final torch is the last knock gate. And as you can see, the output is only on when both inputs are on. Awesome, it's an AND gate. But why exactly does this work? Well, the easiest way to see why it works is literally just by looking at the redstone. This final torch can only turn on if the dust turns off. But the only way for the dust to turn off is for both of these torches to turn off, which you can only do by powering both inputs. Another way to make an AND gate is by using a comparator in subtract mode. All you have to do is put one input in the back and a negated input in the side. This works because the comparator will output a signal only if it has power in the back and it's not being cancelled from the side. Any other combination and you won't get an output. So I guess I kinda lied when I said no component implements it directly, you can fake it pretty well with comparators. Last up we have the XOR gate. The symbol for it is basically an OR gate with a bar on the back. Just like the AND gate, there's no super easy way to make one with redstone. But once again, you can make it with just knots and ORs, and here's the diagram for it. Now I would build this, but over the years, people have created some clever designs that don't exactly follow this diagram. The most common design is this one, it uses two comparators on subtract mode. As you can see, it will output one if only one of the inputs are on. If you input both, it'll output zero. The way this works is by abusing symmetry. If both inputs are on, then both comparators are receiving 14 signal strength in the back and in the side, which means that they're both going to output a zero. But if only one of the inputs are on, then one of the comparators is going to receive less strength in the side than in the back. Notice how this one receives 14 and 14 still, but this one on the right receives 13 and 11. 14 minus 14 is 0, but 13 minus 11 is 2. And when you combine both signals together, the 2 trumps the 0, so we get an output. And this works the other way too, because it's symmetrical. The only bad thing about this design is that the output is a very low signal strength, only 2, which basically forces you to use another repeater. So another configuration you could use is this one. This XOR gate has a much higher signal strength on the output. And yeah, I've genuinely never had the need to use any other type of XOR, but just in case you're looking for more designs, there's going to be more in the world download. At this point, you might be wondering, why did I explain all that Boolean algebra stuff if we're just going to be using logic gates at the end of the day? The reason is because as circuits get more complicated, it gets harder to understand what they're doing just by looking at them. Boolean algebra provides a language for you to stop thinking about redstone and instead think directly about the logic problem you're trying to solve. Also, there are a bunch of Boolean algebra simplifiers online where you can type in an expression and it'll give you an equivalent expression as simplified as possible. That is extremely useful because it can literally show you that you don't need as much redstone. The shorter your expression is, the fewer gates you need to implement it, right? For example, let's say I'm designing a redstone game and I find out I need a circuit to implement this expression. I get really sad because it looks super complicated. But after plugging it into a simplifier, turns out it's equivalent to just A and B. So yeah, that's why I'm going to keep mentioning Boolean Algebra throughout this series because it's a really nice tool. Before I end this video, there are three more logic gates I want to talk about. And don't worry, they're extremely easy to remember. The logic gates OR, AND, and XOR have negated versions named NOR, NAND, and XNOR. The symbols for them are the same as the original symbols but with a dot on the end to signify negation. Each of these gates is equivalent to just taking the normal version and putting a NOT gate on the output. For example, this is the OR gate from earlier, and this is a NOR gate. If you want to make a truth table for a NOR gate, just take the OR gate truth table and invert the output column. Change the ones to zeros and zeros to ones. Similarly, to make a NAND gate, you can take the AND gate from earlier and put a redstone torch on it like this. Although, if you look at this carefully, we have two torches in a row. That's a double negation, which cancels out. So technically you can also just remove a torch instead of adding one. That works too. This is also a NAND gate. And lastly, XNOR. Of course, you can always just slap a torch on the end like we did for the other ones. That's an easy way to do it. 
But another cool way to make an XNOR is by inverting one of the inputs of XOR. This is kind of unintuitive, and it definitely does not work the same way for NOR and NAND, but it's a cool property that I learned recently. You can prove it to yourself by testing it out, or also by using Boolean Algebra. I'll put the Boolean Algebra proof on screen right now if you want to take a look at it. I think that's it for NOR, NAND, and XNOR. And with that, we've covered the basics of Boolean Algebra and the seven main logic gates. A lot of this video is essential to understand for the rest of this series, so please check out the links in the description if you want more resources about these topics. Next episode, we'll start using logic gates to create a redstone adder and some other cool circuits as well. You definitely won't want to miss it. If you'd like to support me in these videos, consider subscribing or even checking out my Patreon page in the description. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys.